Now, a number of Kenyans who have contracted COVID-19 are coming out to speak about their experiences, to raise awareness about the virus, which continues to spread at a very disturbing rate here in Kenya. Dr. Elizabeth Amakove Wala is the former CEO at Kenya Medical Association. She tested positive for COVID-19 and has been documenting her journey on social media while in isolation. Dr. Wala, good evening and thank you for speaking to us. Thank you very much, Lillian. Let's begin with the symptoms you were experiencing, Dr. Amakove. What exactly were you feeling that made, made you feel that it was important that you take uh, the COVID test? Uh, on Thursday evening last week, uh, I started experiencing chills and fevers. Um, I attributed it to a lot of stress that I've been uh, going through, uh, especially losing one of us who uh, was Dr. Doreen Adisa. And um, I attributed it basically to fatigue, so slept it off. And the next morning, I was not functional at all. I remember dialing into a work-related meeting, and uh, at uh, some point at 11, I just told them I can't, I can't do this anymore. So I took some painkillers and, um, and, and slept it off. So in around two days after that, um, I had a friend whom I'd come into contact with, and uh, she told me that she had tested positive for COVID-19, and that is when I felt that I needed to just go and have myself checked. So I got um, checked uh, on uh, Wednesday of this week. By then, the fevers and the chills had, you know, increased into a headache. There was no cough, though, but I could not smell and I could not uh, test anything. Uh, but my appetite was still, was still good. So when the test results came out two days later, um, they were positive for COVID-19. And uh, that is when I started the self-isolation at home. Mm-hmm. Um, Dr. Amakove, what was the first thing that came to your mind when you got the results? Here's a negative result. Um, you've taken the test. What was your reaction to, to, to the positive result? Uh, at the back of my head, there was that possibility lacking, especially with... Um, a friend being in contact with a friend who had positive symptoms. Um, so, but it still doesn't, you're still never prepared. I think the biggest thing for me is um, the things that would be affected, especially in my lifestyle with a positive COVID test, because um, that meant total shutdown, that meant isolation, that meant trying to remember whom I came into contact with, advising them to also get the test. So the results were relayed to me um, in the night of, uh, of of Wednesday. And I remember I was in a teleconference with someone who was helping me to navigate some, some IT stuff that we're doing together. And as I'm uh, watching the screen with the results uh, being shared on my WhatsApp, and I'm still on the Meet, Google Meet meeting with this guy, I continued with the meeting. So now I was just basically in shock. Um, I didn't think I'd read it properly, but uh, nevertheless, I was able to finish that meeting. And then I now went back to the report to just peruse it. So the numbness was uh, more of um, denial because uh, one, I, I live with my children and my house girl. So that meant um, me trying to find out if they are okay. When I was doing the test, I also got my house girl to be tested. Luckily, she got uh, she was negative. Um, I'm, I'm yet to test the children, but the children are fine so far. So the shock of just getting this test result, the fact that I had so many things planned for the following day, and I had to shelve all these things, and the fact that I had to keep on trying to remember who else I came into touch with in the past few days. Mm-hmm. 
And um, thanks for sharing that. You mentioned, Daktari, that you immediately went into isolation. You've talked about the children being under the care of the nanny. Uh, walk us a little bit through um, being in isolation and how you're able to fill in that gap. You're in isolation, but the children are still within the same house. Um, how is that going for you? How are you coping with that particular scenario? So the government has released home-based isolation guidelines, which are available through their website. And one of the things is that they recommend people to isolate at home if the symptoms are mild or no symptoms at all, but also based on the fact that you're able to do the isolation. So I stay in a house where I'm able to stay in my room in ten suit. Um, uh, funny enough, I have to... So I have to be served for food, and the food is placed on a table that's uh, next to the door so that um, uh, my nanny doesn't get inside. The kids, I, um, I had to speak to them. Uh, my relatives also rallied in, um, so I have um, brothers and sisters-in-law who came in and also brought the news to the children, and that helped a lot. I'm very, very um, sorry surrounded very well by people who are able to call and say, can I bring this? Can I bring fruit? Have you tried all these mixtures? Um, so that has helped because I am in a space that um, the environment enables me to self-isolate. It's not very easy, especially for children. If you're used to physical touch, you're used to monitoring. My, my children are still in school, so they have online classes that I, they attend to. So you have to talk through the door, you have to, to talk through Zoom, um, you have to shout at some point. But um, they're taking it well so far. Um, I keep on checking on their progress because sometimes you forget how they feel. Um, they are very well aware that they're not to interact with um, other children from the neighborhood. They have not been doing that, but just as a precaution, again, um, just trying to make them understand uh, what is going through. I remember today I was fixing the bulb in my room and I had to send one of them to the shop that's across the road and you know she came in and she told me open the door and then she held the bulb across the room it almost broke. So I think they're understanding the need for isolation. Um, I've, I've tried to reassure them that um, their symptoms are in very severe and so I'm still able to function which is a good thing. I'm also glad that I have a very supportive work environment. I work for Amra Health Africa, and we have um, psychosocial support through our medical scheme, and that has come in very, very handy. So uh -huh. um, I'm lucky that I am able to do that. I was just wondering whether this is possible for everyone. I know of colleagues who reached out, and others are telling me I'm breastfeeding, doc. How can I stop breastfeeding when you know, I'm um, COVID positive, so what should yeah. I do? So there they are quite a number of Kenyans who are not able to isolate at home, given okay. the circumstances. Final question, Dr. Wala. You're doc documenting your journey and experience on social media, and that's how we got to know um, about um, this particular experience um, you're going through. Um, in terms of awareness, just briefly, what would you like people um, to know about COVID-19? Uh, Lillian, I think the biggest thing um, we didn't do right as a country is uh, when we stigmatize the disease. Um, when people came in from outside the country and put in quarantine situations, and uh, we made having COVID-19 almost criminal, and that drove many people underground. In fact, I remember when I tried to trace back my contacts, um, a couple of them said, you know, I'm feeling also the same thing, do I have it? but yet they were not courageous enough to speak up. So I felt going public, especially being at the front line of uh, managing this condition was very important. I also want to appreciate my neighborhood where I stay. Um, we have um, come to an understanding that uh, even if one of us has COVID-19, that we shouldn't uh, stigmatize them. So the fact that we have in the past seen ambulances coming in to ferry people and sirens and all the stigma and anyone in contact with a, a positive case being, you know, taken to quarantine. I think that 
drove very many people to fear. And so with breaking up this, with speaking about it, documenting it, um, talking about the home-based therapies that are available that people can use, uh, quite a number of people have come forward and said, look, I have also tested positive or I tested positive, I'm negative. Um, so that gives a lot more courage when you speak about it, when you don't go into denial, because it's a disease. It's a disease that can be managed. And so um, important that we handle it like any other disease so that we are able to have many more speaking up, many more taking more care when they're out there. And um, yeah, just mm -hmm. joining our hands, doing our part in what we need to do. And we wish you a quick recovery, Dr. Elizabeth Amakove Wala. Uh, she mm -hmm. has been sharing um, on her journey after testing positive for COVID-19, speaking against stigma and, and saying that indeed, um, if people, if more people come out and actually accept that they are indeed positive, it will help in the fight against COVID-19 in the country and indeed in the awareness. Yesterday, Kenya recorded the highest rise in a 24-hour period in COVID-19 infections as 796 people tested positive, pushing the total caseload to 15,600 and one. Today's numbers um, are extremely high as well. They have risen and despite the surge in cases some Kenyans are still ignoring containment measures such as social distancing wearing of face masks and sanitizing. You've heard from Dr. Wala herself. She's a frontliner um, in the health sector and therefore just a word of caution out there to stay safe and for those um, that are um, currently um, in isolation to stay strong you will beat this.